we're going to look at problems on solving uh, using Newton's law to solve a two-body problem. Two-body problem is two bodies that are connected together. So, um, and by it might be by a string, by some links, or something like that. The first case, uh, we'll look at simple. We'll look at a case where there's no friction. Now we've already looked at uh, how we write Newton's law, where we write sigma f, which is the sum of the forces, equals uh, mass times acceleration. So we're going to be using that formula. And there's two steps to solve these two body problems. First, uh, the first step is to draw the free body diagram. So we want to draw free body diagrams for each mass individually. And the second step, then, would be to write Newton's law for each mass and in each direction. In other words, in the x and y direction. So we want to write the second law for each direction. That's x, y for each mass. So that's the basic outline and then we can solve for either tension or acceleration uh, joining them. Let's look at the first problem and this problem will have no friction in and the simplest one is where we have a table there's a pulley of negligible mass there is mass 1 here and it's connected through a string going over a pulley to mass 2. And as I said the surface here is going to be frictionless to make life easy. So the first thing we want to do then is following our rules is to draw free body diagrams. Um, by the way this the mass of course this thing is going to move this way and this thing's going to move this way. So let's um, extend this page a little bit and then we will draw our free body diagrams. So here's mass 1 and here's mass 2. I'm going to draw them far apart because we're going to write underneath them. So in the first one, we can see there's a string pulling it to the right. So that's going to be a tension. It's resting on a surface. So it's going to have a, the surface pushing back, which is the normal force. And it's going to be pressing down with its own weight, which is going to be m1q. So that's the first. That's it. That's it. There are no friction. So that's it. That's it for the forces for the first mass. For the second mass, we see there's a string holding it up. So that's going to be a tension pulling upward. Those two tensions in mass 1 and mass 2, this is the same. They're the same tension because it's the same string. Uh, the pulley is massless. We're going to assume the string doesn't stretch and the pulley doesn't have any friction. So if it did, if the pulley had friction and the string stretched, then the tensions might not be the same. But the tensions are going to be the same for this problem here. And of course, its own weight is pulling it downward. So that's our free body diagrams. And underneath those, we're going to write Newton's laws for each object in each direction. So let's take the first one. The first one, I'm going to sum the forces uh, in the x direction. And we're going to set it equal to m1 a, mass times acceleration. Now, how many forces are there in the x direction? Well, we'll take a look at the diagram. There's one, there's tension. So we have one force there. And I'll put that up there just to, to note. I, ordinarily, you would write I equals 1 to N, and it would just be 1. So we can write here T equals M1A. Then we write the um, sum of the forces. And I'm going to just draw a dotted line there so we're not going to confuse. In the y direction, 
And in the y direction, I'm going to set that equal to m1a. And how many forces in the y direction do we have? We have two, two forces. Um, also, in the y direction, if you look up at the diagram, the diagram shows, let me go back there, the diagram shows that uh, m1 is resting on a surface. So we don't expect m1 to go flying up into the air or to go crashing through the surface. So what will be the acceleration in the y direction? And if you said 0, you're correct. So all the forces in the y direction must add up to 0. And again, what do we have? We've got one going up and one going down. So we've got the normal force going up, m1g going down. So immediately we can solve that. We can say that the normal force is going to equal to m1g. And that's pretty much as far as we go. Notice I haven't given any numbers here. Uh, some numbers are interesting, but sometimes you learn more when you actually look at the formula. So the formula is sometimes more interesting than the actual um, numbers. If I, if I tell you the answer is 5 meters per second squared, yeah, well, big deal. But if we can see a formula, we might be able to read some physics into that formula. All right, well, we couldn't get much past tension equals m1a, that first one over here. So let's see what happens when we do the second one. In the second one, we don't have any x direction forces. So we're just going to write the sum of the forces in the y direction equals m2a. And we see there are two forces in the y direction. Now, before we go any further, we have to figure out which way this thing's going to go. Which way will this thing accelerate? Again, we look at the diagram. Bring it back up here. The diagram shows m2 is going to be going down. m1 is going to go to the right, and in order for this to be consistent, m2 has to go down. So for m2 to go down, that means downward is going to be positive. So anything down is going to be positive. Anything pointed up is going to be negative. Okay. So we can change. We can change our coordinate system uh, to what we see fit. So consequently, I'm going to write m2a, and I get uh, negative tension plus m2g equals m2a. All right. So now we have to take that information and combine it somehow. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this piece of information in here. And so if we do that, we then find that I've got, and I'll bring this over here, minus M1A plus M2G equals M2A. I can bring that over to the other side. If I add that to both sides, I get M1A plus M2A. And then what's next? What's next is we can factor out the acceleration. So I get M2G equals M1 plus M2 times A. And finally, to solve for the acceleration, divide both sides by m1 plus m2. So I get the acceleration equal m2g over m1 plus m2. And that's our acceleration. And let's look to see if it makes sense to us. Um, if, and I'll just take one more minute with this, if m1 equals 0, what is a? Well, if m1 equals 0, then a equals m2g over m2, or a equals g. So that makes intuitive sense to us, because you essentially you cut the string and the thing just falls. So uh, that's our equation. The other thing you look at is if m1 is very, very large, the acceleration is going to be very, very small. And so that makes intuitive sense, too. It's much more difficult to move a heavy object with a lot of mass and inertia. We'll look at a numerical example in the next video.